On tonight's No Things Considered, the juice is loose, OMG make the Russia story stop already, and Elon Musk wants a moon base. And now here's your host, Tim Young. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to No Things Considered. My name is Tim Young, and if you're watching this right now, it means you're on Facebook. <laughs> a lot of things happen in the news today, but let's start off with something very serious. Uh, John McCain apparently has uh, signs of brain cancer, and we all, like I think everyone is unified, except for a bunch of assholes on the internet uh, in saying that we hope the best happens and that he beats this awful uh, issue. So, uh, that being said, uh, there's no segue for... O.J. Simpson's hearing was today, <laughs> and uh, he got his parole. How about that? The juice is loose. So finally, finally, he can catch the real killers. That is glad he's out there. And by the way, uh, New York Daily News, of course, everything has to come back to Donald Trump. Here we go. He says, looking back at, this is a big article today, by the way, uh, looking back at Donald Trump's on-off affection for O.J. Simpson. Here, uh, they also accuse him of flip-flopping. Donald Trump, they accuse uh, of flip-flopping on O.J. Simpson. Because, you know, by the way, when you find out that your friend's a murderer, usually you kind of stop calling, right? That's like a thing. <laughs> Isn't that like a Have you guys ever had a murderer friend? You, you just stop calling him. It's not cool. Not ah, whatever. Uh, if you guys ever want to learn anything about statistics, we're going to give you a, a little lesson in how to spin them right now. Reuters saying that one in eight people who voted for Trump are having second thoughts. Now, this is a poll that came out just yesterday. Yesterday? Came out yesterday that says 88% of people who voted for Trump originally will vote for him now, meaning there's 12 people, the 12% 12 of people who are like, Meh, maybe something else. I want you to take a look at the numbers then. We're going to put these full screen because it's hard to see when it's just over my shoulder. In May, 82% of Trump voters said that they would vote for Trump again, with 9% saying they wouldn't vote and 5% saying they wouldn't. No, now in July, two months later, now in July, two months later, uh, that number went up to 88%, with only 1% saying they wouldn't vote and 7% saying they don't know. Now, now this is significant, actually, and it's not significant in that one in eight people say that they won't vote for Trump. It's that it went up from one in five to one in eight. So more people are more likely to vote for Trump. He's actually more popular now in July than he was in May. But if you spin it the other way, and we'll go back to the other slide. Let's see if I can go back to the slide here. They're trying to make it sound like it's a negative thing. It's actually a net positive for Donald Trump. 88% of people who voted for him before We'll vote for him now. That's pretty good. And actually, when you calculate all the other uh, may not vote or uh, don't know, it takes it to 95% of people who voted for Trump are pretty much locked into voting for him again. So it's an overall net positive for Donald Trump. 6% uh, more people who voted for him originally uh, would vote for him now instead of what it would have been in May. The end. It's not one in eight people wouldn't vote. It's more people. His popularity has actually gone back up where it was down a little bit two months ago. The end. How about that? Hmm. In other news, Rosie O'Donnell's back, and boy, what excitement when she's around. Huh? By the way, do you ever see her and Michael Moore in the same place, or is it <laughs> not the same place? He just puts on a wig and gets a really crappy tan. Uh, here she is on Twitter yesterday, threatening the president, as she likes to do, uh, saying that you should participate in a push Trump off a cliff meme. Seriously? But, I mean, this is, it's really getting old and tired, this like violence against the president thing. But if Donald Trump were to say, like, push her off a cliff, He'd probably be accused of, like, violence against women. He hates women. He's sexist, misogynist, blah, 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 blah. But if you do it to him, it's okay, right? When will they learn? I mean, in the last little piece that we talked about here, more Trump supporters are more likely to vote for him than in July than in May. So I guess if you keep up this rhetoric, it'll be 100%, and he'll get reelected. Hmm. If you've been watching the news this last week, the G20 summit produced another story, which is absolutely ridiculous, that Donald Trump met with Vladimir Putin at a dinner for an hour. Guys, I, this is insane to me. But to Stephen Colbert, well, it's the greatest scandal in American political history. After their public meeting at the G20, we just found out that Trump had an undisclosed second meeting with Vladimir Putin. Really? How stupid can you be? You're in the middle of what could be the worst scandal in U.S. history. People think you colluded with the president of a hostile foreign power. Then you go out of your way to meet with him again, and you don't tell anybody? So the media and late-night hosts are upset that Donald Trump met with Vladimir Putin again. And it was just, it ends up being a casual conversation. You'll see exactly where they were seated when this all went down. But what is the big deal? The president can meet with whoever he wants, whenever he wants. This isn't collusion. This isn't anything crazy. You're just talking about optics now because you're trying to push 
this dead Russian collusion story. It keeps going, and it's just frustrating to hear at this point. How stupid can you be? You're in the middle of what could be the worst scandal in U.S. history. People think you colluded with the president of a hostile foreign power. Then you go out of your way to meet with him again, and you don't tell anybody? You see, media thinks that Donald Trump is stupid because they're not doing things the way that they want him to do them at this point. This is how crazy this is getting. It's, they're not opposed to him meeting with people. They're now opposed to him meeting in certain ways with people and at certain times. And it's because they're not following what, he wa what they want him to do. I can't even get it right. It's so confusing. It's a bit crazy. And Seth Meyers continues the narrative. Yesterday, we learned there was a second undisclosed hour-long meeting with Putin during dinner at the summit. A political scientist who first broke the news and heard about the meeting from other world leaders who were there said pretty much everyone at the dinner thought this was really weird, that here is the president of the United States who clearly wants to display that he has a better relationship personally with President Putin than any of us. Hey, man, what's the matter with you? See, that's the problem right there. Seth Meyers saying, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you doing the things that we want you to do, the media wants you to do? Guys, that's like listening to your ex-girlfriend telling you what to do. Listen. You're gone now. I don't, I don't have to go to dinner at Pizza Hut anymore. I know you loved Pizza Hut, but I don't have to go to Pizza Hut anymore just because you say that you like Pizza Hut and we should all go to Pizza Hut all the time. Pizza Hut's not a sponsor of the show, by the way. But you get the point. The media lost. And now that they lost, they want to dictate exactly what the president should be doing. They've lost the narrative. They lost the election. It's insane. And by the way, it's, it's not like the president met with a representative of the, of the Russian delegation to talk about how, after his second election, he could uh, lower the missile defenses. Let's face it, yeah. After my election, I have more flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. I transmit this information to Vladimir and let them look Yeah, where was the outrage with that? Oh, by the way, there was just a little bit of outrage, not quite as much, because Fox News is reporting that CNN actually gave that story, three times less coverage, even though Obama was literally publicly saying that he was going to help lower missile defenses against Russia in his second term in office. The Trump collusion story is bigger than that? There's actual evidence of a president literally saying he's going to help out the Russian Federation. <sighs> no bias to be seen here. Nothing to see in here, guys. Nothing at all to see here. Let's show the picture of where they were at this dinner, by the way. And by the way, this is where the secret meeting was held. The secret meeting between Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin was held in a, by the way, it was called couples only dinner. Um, <laughs> and there it was. All of the world's leaders were in one place. They sat together and they talked for a little while in front of all of the world's leaders. Again, if Donald Trump is up to no good, he's really bad at it. He should be really, like, I mean, you gotta be, if you're gonna have a secret meeting, make it secret, right? Because it wasn't a secret meeting and Donald Trump said that online. Guys, wow. This is just pathetic. Oh, and by the way, Seth Meyers goes on because, well, here's a problem. We, we have this whole health care repeal and replace thing. And I, I'm going to be very honest with you. Over the past eight years, Republicans said repeal and replace, repeal and replace. They, in fact, they passed bills that they knew weren't going to get signed. It's time to repeal and replace. But Seth Meyers takes a different angle. They say that, well, they're arguing over health care. Donald Trump's not doing anything, which is ridiculous. And, well, the rant keeps going. Fair going forward. Because remember, Trump never campaigned on actual policy. He made vague, outlandish promises, assuring his supporters that everything would be great without getting into specifics. Everything would be great without getting into specifics and using vague words? I've never heard of that before. I never saw that before. Wow, never been done. Totally no, no double standard to be seen here. <laughs> what? Oh, for, forget it. It's Obama. They like him. It's cool. Keep going, Seth. Of course, Trump is the one, along with the rest of the Republican Party, who promised that he would repeal and replace Obamacare with something better and cheaper that would cover everyone and would be easy to pass. So what was he doing on Monday as the bill was collapsing? He was at the White House sitting in a fire truck. Oh, and where was Obama when we were in multiple wars? Obamacare premiums were rising and people couldn't probably, for the most part in the Midwest, figure out where their next meal was coming from. Oh, he was busy having an interview with this YouTube sensation who bathed in a pile of Fruit Loops and brought him green lipstick to the White House. Okay. Don't come empty handed. Right. So um, I have green lipsticks, one for 
Yes. Your first wife. Oh. In and by the way, if you look closely at the video, Obama was ready for a challenge. The uh, cinnamon challenge. They had the cinnamon ready because she did that too on YouTube. So don't tell me about Donald Trump sitting in a truck, a fire truck, when health care needs to be passed. Because when the world was on fire during the Obama administration, he was wasting time with YouTube stars that take baths in Fruit Loops and do the cinnamon challenge. Oh, that's right. You have a double standard because it's Obama. Keep the clips rolling. He did actually accomplish something else on health care that is very impressive. If you look at what's happening now, according to this, this poll, this Washington Post ABC poll, Obamacare is more popular than ever. It's 50% prefer Obamacare, 24% prefer the GOP plan. That's right. Well, uh, in polls from CNN, by the way, uh, oh, and CNN, it was a six alarm fire when they talked about Obamacare the other day. There was six, oh, it's, well, it's seven if you count Don Lemon, but it's six there. Well, somebody's going to argue it in the comments. It's fine. But when they were arguing about that, Donald Trump has made Obamacare more popular than ever because he wants to repeal and replace it. Oh, and, and their polls are the polls that predicted that he would not be president right now and that Hillary would be in office. So let's go ahead and listen to everything CNN has to say, right? They definitely don't spin the news. <laughs> Guys, you know what else is more popular than ever thanks to Donald Trump? Twitter. Brought them out of basically near bankruptcy there. Anyway, let me see where this is going. Next clip. All Trump managed to do was make Obamacare more popular. That's right. All Trump managed to do was make Obamacare more popular. And by more popular, people are more aware that they can't afford their health care. People are more aware that this thing needs to be repealed and replaced. And people are more aware that he's kind of on the right path for America. Mm. Sorry, Seth. Sorry, Reuters. It's tough times. Uh, in other news, Elon Musk. Calling for a moon base. Wow, Space.com reporting that one. Remember when Newt Gingrich wanted a moon base? Didn't he talk about a moon base? They said he was crazy. Well, when Elon Musk does it on Space.com. And by the way, what is on Space? What do you report on Space.com? There's rocks flying around. <laughs> stars. Moons. Actually, they, I went on the website and they report about Star Trek conventions too. <laughs> oh my God. Space.com. For all your space needs. In addition to that, he says the Boring Company was given approval to do the underground hyperloop from New York, D.C. to Philadelphia. Whatever. I mean, it's going to be $2,500 a person to go each way, so I'm never taking it. I'm going to keep using the bus because it's 10 bucks to New York. I need a sponsorship from them, too. It's 10 bucks to New York on the bus. Hey, you take the, I'm not going to say the name of the bus. You won't, you're going to have to pay me for that. It's ridiculous. Before we go today, I want to remind you that next Wednesday night we have our 53rd episode extravaganza at Stanton Green on Capitol Hill. If you guys have never been there, it's going to be a party. It's where the show originally started filming just over a year ago uh, before we came over to the Daily Caller. So we're going to have our 53rd episode extravaganza over there. It's going to be a, a, pretty much we're going to have all of the minor celebrities who have been on the show before. I believe Scotty Nell Hughes is going to break her media silence. She's going to be on the show next week. I confirmed that yesterday. With all of her scandals, that ought to be a good one. A lot of drinks and just a good fun time. So you guys should come out to Stanton Green next Wednesday night. 7 o'clock are the doors and the show is going to run a little bit long. So it'll be a good one. Guys, we are here every night of the week at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Daily Caller Facebook page. No things considered. If you want to see more breaking news, go to dailycaller.com, dailycallernewsfoundation.org. Click the like button, click that heart button, click that smiley face, smash that like button. I just like smash that like button. No, I'm not supposed to say that. Hit the share button as well. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here. Facebook page, Daily Caller. There's my microphone. It's coming off.